<clears throat> Hello, entrepreneurs, dreamers, business owners, and happy people with high hopes. Welcome to Cash Flows with your host, Cash Matthews. Okay, hey, welcome to Cash Flows. We're glad you're here. I'm Cash Matthews, your host for a riveting edition of this show. And uh, this is a fun place to be. This place is for people that have kind of been stuck a little bit, but maybe you want to learn something about how to move forward in life. We call that the good life. So this could be business, relationships, health, money, financial, planning, all of those things. And what we do is we bring in experts from the community who know things, and we grab some business nuggets that we call biz bites. We get a few biz bites from the community, and uh, we really enjoy sharing that. You know, in life, I found out in the third grade, we're not supposed to copy off of our neighbors. <laughs> and uh, I, w- I was furious when I found that out because I thought I'd discovered the, you know, the golden nugget. Um, but I copied off my neighbor in third grade math because he was smarter than me. And I still got in trouble for it. I found out in my mid-20s, it is absolutely okay to copy off your neighbor, especially if they're smarter than you in an area. And, you know, we call that emulation. It's not cheating. Mm. And so emulate your smart people. And uh, anyway, so that's uh, that's what we're here to do. We have a philosophy called fire, aim, ready. And it's about taking action, not perfect action, just action. A little bit of action with consistency will get you great results. And speaking of somebody who's getting great results, I'd like to introduce our executive producer, Mr. Kenneth Bauckham. Kenneth, how are you? Hey, I'm doing good, Cash. Thank you so much. How are you? Uh, you know, I've, it, it was it's it's great. Good. Yeah, and I, I'm not just saying that to say it. I'm yeah. I'll always tell you if I'm doing not so great. But well, I'm doing, I appreciate that. Things are good, man. The, yeah, the show's going great. What episode are we on? Oh man, we are all the way up to number one oh four. One oh four. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And they said we wouldn't make it to. 103. Yeah, I don't know. And yet here, <laughs> yet here we are. Anybody can do We've 103. We've proved our haters wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody can do 103. We've done 104. But but yeah, we're just here sharing some amazing nuggets of wisdom, um, not only from ourselves and our own experiences, but also from the guests on our show. So 103 uh, shows in our rearview mirror and one more here in our, in, front of in our windshield, right? Right. And um, and yeah, so being able to share all of those things is super fun. We do have a section of our show that we love to be able to um, to just kick off with this very first nugget as we're getting into the show. And this part of our show is called Biz Bites. Let it flow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Biz Bites? Biz, bu- Biz, bu- Biz Bites? Biz Bites? So I'm wondering, Mr. Cash, as we get into this section, what do you have for us today in today's Biz Bites? Biz today are the characteristics of a champion. Ooh, I like it. Not somebody making a decent living. Not somebody doing pretty good. Not somebody who's risen up in the comp plan at their business, but somebody who's really bringing it. Okay. You know, a lot of times people say, how does that guy do it? You know, he makes it look so easy. And, uh, you know, in life we get paid for in public, essentially, for mm-hmm. the hard work we do in private. Yeah, I've been very, very fortunate in my life to work with very successful business people, entrepreneurs, athletes, Olympic uh, competitors, uh, mm-hmm. rock stars. And, you know, you start to see people and you there's a common thread in between all of them, although they are not in similar industries, they have similar threads. And I'll share a couple of those with you. And by the way, this won't be the entire answer. We want to have you think about the question, not just answer it for you, because why the question is why the question is the question. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's I'm, deep. I'm sorry. I went kind of deep there. All but, right. Or, yeah. Anyway, so <laughs> I'm, I'm going to give you three things about champions in life, business, sports, what have you. Uh, number one, they are responsible for themselves, hmm. not their spouse, not their uncle, not their mama. Not the economy, not the president, not the rules. They are responsible for building what it is they've built, when they built it, and they are to be given full credit. You know, it's it's really easy to blame things on people. Champions don't blame things on people. You know, they they don't blame anything. They take full responsibility. And by take, I mean they grab full responsibility. It's not forced upon mm-hmm. them. They take it. And that is a subtle difference in the wording. But when you take responsibility, 
only then can you really begin to work on yourself, your methods, and your story. And if your story is not where you want it to be, we have a cure for that. In fact, you can get one down at any five and dime, and it's called a mirror. <laughs> and uh, get a mirror, take a look at yourself. Therein lies the answer to your, that, not to your problems. Therein lies the answer to your goals. Mm. Champions take responsibility. Number two, champions have a decided heart. They've made up their mind. Look, if you've been in five businesses in three years, you are the problem. You know, there's, there are vehicles and there are drivers. There are vehicles and there are drivers. You're going to remember this forever. The vehicle is your opportunity. The driver is you. If things aren't going well for you in the vehicle, is not the vehicle most often. Because you're, unless you made up the vehicle yourself, you've probably copied, good call, you've probably copied somebody to do what they're doing. Look, there's drivers. you gotta, you got to have a great vehicle. Mm-hmm. But number two, you got to be a great driver of that vehicle. People that win have a decided heart. They aren't messing around. They aren't guessing around. They aren't business hopping every, you know, six months, year, even two years. It's not enough time to give one idea. Uh, so you have a decided heart. You've made up your mind. The word decide comes from the Greek, the origin of to cut off all possibilities is side. Um, decide means this is it. This is where I'm going to plant my flag. The night I started my business around 1980, I told the person recruiting me, I got recruited into a thing. And I said, hey, hey, sir, I'm going to be in this business. You can count on me. I'll be here the next 40 years. Of course, when you're 20, you don't know how much 40 years goes by. But I told him that night, you can count on me. Mm -hmm. I'm your guy. You can come back in 40 years. I'll still be here. And he said, son, if you know how many people said that to me, you'd laugh. August 15th last was 42 years. Yeah. Yeah. I stuck it out. I had a decided heart and uh, that'll help you all the way. And so with that, Kenneth, I, I can't remember why we're here. Don't we have a show to do? We do have a show to do. We have a guest as well. When did she get here? Well, she got here before we hit record. Okay, Sharon, good. (laughs) Hey, let me introduce uh, Sharon Willard. And uh, we're going to talk to her about her business, Mature Transitions of Tulsa. I'm going to give you the website right now in the middle and later. And uh, her her website is maturetransitionsoftulsa.com, and you can reach Sharon Willard there if you have more questions about this topic. And I think it's about seniors aging in place and aging in grace and doing things in a right way. And, and if you don't know this, if you're 20, 30, you're going to be old one day. You're going to look like this. What? Ha! Unbelievable. <laughs> it's, it's coming. It it's unavoidable, and you don't want it to be unavoidable. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, it it is like you do. I guess you do want it to be unavoidable. Well, yeah. So yeah, yeah. The other option, death. So stick around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that was simple. Yeah, boy, I kind of bungled that one, but I usually do. That's my specialty. <laughs> I uh, well, Sharon, we're we are very very glad you're here. Glad and, to be here. And we met you through this idea called the Business Owners Networking Group, right? Yes. Because that was our origin point. Yes. And I know I know that's recent for you, and you've come to, I think you came to a meeting at this office. Yes. And mm-hmm. did you come to the new member coffee thing? I went to a giving breakfast. And oh, the I went giving to another, breakfast. Yes. Yeah, okay. That was my first oh, encounter. Your first encounter with the bong was the giving yes. breakfast? Mm-hmm. Well, tell our audience what that was. That was amazing. So it was an opportunity to everyone that came brought a hundred dollar bill and um, the waitress did not know what was going on. And so she just did a great job, phenomenal job. And at the very end, they presented their, her with an envelope and everybody that came, I think it was like 45 people. There's there. 38. 38. Yeah, we had 38, yeah. I think was the number. Yes. And uh, we gave her all the money. Yes, yeah. she was excited about I that. Went, I went back and saw her around the corner when she was standing there with her jaw hanging open. And uh, somebody said she didn't look that excited. And uh, if they had any idea how that hit her at the right yeah. time, mm-hmm. it, it, she just couldn't talk. Yes. And uh, caught her by surprise. I went back a, a, a week later and she's like, Is it just you? <laughs> 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 it, it was pretty funny, but we had a great time. Yes, and then you, you've been a part of the bong. How's that been working out for you, meeting people, getting to know people a little better? It has been amazing. Yeah. It, absolutely. And so just, it was an eye opener. And I think we had talked, I think I joined two years ago and didn't didn't even know I didn't it. even know it. And so not until that time and I was like, Where have you guys been all this time? Yeah. It's just amazing. So And we're right here. Yeah. 
Yeah, so the the bong has been uh, been a big deal for a lot of people, and we're very very glad you're part of it. Well, we want to jump in and hear. I want to hear about you first, okay. and I want to hear about your family or anything else you want to talk about. Who's Sharon Willard? Sharon Willard. Okay, so I am from the big metropolis of Beggs, Oklahoma. Yes. Oh. I am one of ten children. Oh, okay. Goodness. One girl and or actually, it's two of us and two girls and eight boys. Wow. Wow. So we lived out in the country. My parents did in-home mission, and so I was raised in the country. Okay. And um, so went to school, Beggs Public Schools, the whole entire time. Then went off to college at Oklahoma Baptist University. Met my husband. I was a senior. We got married, moved to California, and came back. We've been in Tulsa about hmm, since 1993. All right. So wow. you're a veteran. Yes. Yeah. I mean, you're a veteran Tulsa person. Yes. Very, very yeah. cool. Mm-hmm. So to give us an overarching view of your business. Say it in general terms so we can dig in a little bit later. What, what's your business about? Okay. So I uh, own Mature Transitions of Tulsa. And what that is, is a business that helps 55 plus seniors navigate through the later parts of their years. Mm -hmm. We educate, empower, and equip them to know how to, on that roadmap of what to do. Because there's just so much that goes on and we don't think about aging, like you said, but we do. It happens. It happens. Yeah. Yeah. I was 20 once and now I'm almost 60, so... I've got a pair of shoes in my closet, literally, that I've owned 45 years. Wow. And I took pretty good care of them, but uh, that means I lost them. Um, <laughs> but I, I put them back in my closet. Wow. But, it, you, you know, you start realizing when you have stuff that's, like, older than the oldest person when you were 18, you know, it, it, it's pretty interesting. Yeah. Well, So you work with people in the aging mm-hmm. markets, 55 and above. Mm-hmm. And they're adult children. And they're – well, yeah, because, you know, that's – there's a thing called the baby boom trap, yes. and that is when you know you're kind of you've got maybe kids in college and up, but you have aging parents that are at home, mm-hmm. and your responsibility changes if one of those parents should become you know the disabled's not the word but you know uh, old yes and you know it's it's a tough time not everybody enjoys those years, um, what so what's the number one problem you see? Because, I mean, you're seeing people every day that are in this category. What's the number one thing you're seeing that the senior population is not prepared for? Um, For me, I'm thinking that they're just thinking they're going to be young. They just go through life, not think anything about it, Mm -hmm. and a catalyst happens, and it catches you by surprise. And then you're stuck with having to navigate through that, and you haven't prepared, you haven't planned, you have no idea what's going on for a lot of people. And so... Hmm. Um, I have to kind of jump in and, and be that person to be able to help out through that time. Right. So I've, I've done a lot of study, and I love talking about the senior population in my own uh, financial practice. It's our, one of, you know, our primary clientele. Um, but there's an interesting thing happening in this baby boom generation. You know, everybody that was uh, coming back from the war, they were very productive, I guess is the right word. And in a short amount of time, there are 80 million babies born. And, uh, you know, every part of industry that those 80 million babies touch absolutely explodes. Well, those 80 million babies are turning 65 Mm -hmm. at a rate of 10,000 a day for the next 22 years. Like, Mm -hmm. I don't know if you research this business, but you're in the right place at the right time. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, uh. So, you know, I, I think, uh, and I'm not here to compliment you or any of that kind of stuff, but just, I'm a math guy. But, but thank just, you anyway. But, but just, yeah. to, <laughs> just to recognize where you are in the marketplace, mm-hmm. you know, I bet everybody listening and or watching this show has somebody in their life that are a little bit older that needs some help. Yes. Or they can tell they're going to need some help in the next, you know, two to three years. Yes. Um, Do you see one thing causing retirement problems more than the other? You know, I mean, I know Alzheimer's is prevalent and, you know, the financial side of life is difficult. What's driving all of this in your world? So what's driving it is that, like we said, we're aging. Yeah. And back when I was growing up, our parents didn't talk about finances. They didn't talk about if they had it. They didn't talk about what they didn't. We didn't know what their plans were. And so you're just kind of muffling through, and that's what happens to a lot of kids nowadays. Right. Their parents are aging, 
they haven't had the conversation about where they want to live. Right. Do they want to stay at home? Do they want to go to a senior community? And right. if they don't make those decisions on their own, then guess what? Their kids are going to make those decisions for them. And right. a large percentage of the time, they're just doing what they feel is the right thing to do, even though it may not be what the parents are wanting. So, right. hmm. so is it easy to work in that industry? For me, it is. Not yeah. for everybody. It, right. I, I didn't realize it. And so I feel like it's a gift. And, and and like I said, I don't toot my own horror, but I hear a lot of people saying, you know what? We love what you do. And um, for me, it's just – that's just – I've been very blessed to be able to do that. But it takes a lot of patience because a lot of my clientele, either onset dementia, they're, you know, or the adult children. Right. I'm having to deal with them. And so there's just so much that goes into it, and you have to have a lot of patience, kind of like an unpaid therapist. Is it troublesome dealing with adult children of seniors? Sometimes it is. You know, um, can I? I don't know if I can say this or not, but we have a we have a phrase for them. We call them GLBs. Oh, what's that being uh, greedy little but children. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, and I mean, you you deal with that, right? Yes, absolutely. Do you, do you have to deal with uh, siblings trying to duke it out over the garage sale items? You know, over the money. You know, actually, I've been very fortunate. I don't. Okay. My main concern is a lot of times whenever. They know the parents need to go to maybe assisted living or something right. because they can't live at home. And a lot of times the kids are like, oh, it's cost too much money. Right. And if the seniors have not prepared for that and it's costing anywhere between three and ten thousand dollars a month. Right. They can't do that. Right. And even if they do have money saved back, the kids are like, don't spend my inheritance for that. Right. You can come live with me. And guess what? They move mom and dad in with them and then they go off to work. And leave them at home. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I had a, I had a client that was a conversation and he had a decent net worth and a house and, and, uh, his younger daughter was a mess. And she said, dad, you can just come and live with me. And I, we were working out these plans like this, you know, to try to, and, and we're looking for help. And the daughter said, dad, you can just come and live with me. I can take care of you. And I went, okay, pick him up. She weighed about 98 pounds. <laughs> he he's he's rolling around too, hun. Oh my and goodness! And like, let me watch you pick him up. Seriously, mm -hmm. pick him up with no help from him. You really think you can take care of an aging parent? Mm -hmm. Then she got mad at me, mm, and uh, and he told her to shut up that I was his guy. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, that's a rare thing. Like they'll normally yes. side with their kids, but you know, I mean, it's a thing. I mean, mm -hmm. look, if you're forty five and above, watching this show with Sharon Willard. You need to get prepared. Uh, life is, I mean, life is awesome, but death is certain. Yes. And, mm -hmm. you know, those last five or six years, you know, we've got all the health food companies making us older, and those are bad times anyway, <laughs> <laughs> you know. So, like, hey, if you're older and you, and you don't have the money, smoke them if you got them, man. You know, Twinkie up. And, but, look, if, you know, if you're still in a spot that you can make an impact, that end of the road is tough. Make it easy on yourself. Because what do champions do? They take self-responsibility. Mm -hmm. And man, you may not be a champion in business or life at the moment, but you need to be at that last quadrant of your life. Yes. And that's where somebody like Sharon Willard can come in and help you find the resources. And, and I want to hear, you talked about educate, empower, and equip. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty broad. Is one of those more important than the other? I think so. So they're all important. But for me, the education piece is most important mm. because what happens is you don't know what you don't know. Right. And as you go through and you're finding out about these situations that are going to come about, then when that situation comes, then you're going to be prepared and know how to handle it and know where to go for resources. How far in advance is too far to do? And I don't want to call it just end of life planning, but I want to call it senior life planning. How far in advance is too far to plan that out? It's a great question. And I know that there's no perfect time. Right. And I had a personal experience a few years ago when my husband, 62 years old, perfect condition, mountain bike, street bike, dirt bike, indoor rock climbing, everything. Wow. He was complaining about his back hurting. He was out of town, came back in, went to the emergency room and was in triage for like nine hours. And wow. finally, when they went to go see him, they said... Your T8, T9 vertebrae has cancer on it. It's degenerating. You oh, have 
uh, a spot on your liver, a spot on your lung, and a carotid artery has a tumor wrapped around it. And so from being very, very active to within like weeks, just dropping weight. Wow. And I was actually calling hospice, pre-planning a funeral, everything because I didn't know what the next step was. Right. And he mm. was basically, you know, to the point where he's like, after 30 years of marriage, he's like, you're young. And he was telling me, I give you my blessing to remarry. Mm. So, so that's so how. So this situation is at wow. that point. Yes. The finality. Yes. But then again, he came back when he found out later. It's a good story at the end. But when he found out he wasn't dying, he was like, you can take all those apps off your phone now. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So, oh, delete your profile. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but what I'm saying is there's no perfect time. So for him being 62, <laughs> he wasn't thinking about all these things that you had to have in place sure. and having these conversations. It just happened. And, and I was... Was he able to recover? Yes. He's mountain biking, street biking, dirt biking, everything like it never happened. Still going, mm, man. Yes. That's, uh, we, wow. 65. We, all right. That is very, very awesome. We're going to take a quick break okay. and say thank you to one of our... Unbelievable sponsors. All right. Here we go. Embark on a journey into the realm of affordable custom gifting and branded excellence with CM Customs. From custom trophies to personalized closing gifts, lake maps, drinkware, and professional branding items, we are your go-to for unmatched customization, making you the hero of every occasion. Learn more at shopcmcustoms.com. All right, we are here today with Sharon Willard. Her company is Mature Transitions of Tulsa. Her website where she can be found is maturetransitionoftulsa.com. You can find her on the Tulsa Bong Facebook page, and you can also reach out to us to find her. If you can't use those other two resources, we can be found at cashflows at tulsabong.com. A lot of interneting going on out there. A lot of interneting on the interwebs. Yeah, the And the triple dubs. What's the triple dub? Oh, the W. World Wide Web. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Triple dubs. Do you have to put the W's in there anymore? You don't. Not usually. Yeah. And so actually, there's there's actually times now where that will break it, too. So you won't actually be able to load the I site, may have so. broken the internet. You may have. I'm kind of you proud of that. Have. There's yeah. somebody in Wisconsin going, hey, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> We've got a light switch in my house. It yeah. doesn't do anything. And so every yeah. so often, I just flip it up and down 50, 60 times. Yeah. So and some guy a couple of blocks away is like, what is going on over yeah, here? Yeah, well, a guy from Germany actually called me and goes, stop it. <laughs> So I gave that up. <laughs> I, I need to talk to the builder about that one. <laughs> All right, Sharon Willard, Mature Transitions of Tulsa. We're talking about this issue that literally affects every person in our country, literally every person in the world. It's called growing older, the graying of America. How do you make a plan for something that is certain to happen? You know, and I think that's a, a worry for people. And you, you talk about empowering, educating, equipping people. What happens when people are, I mean, when you've given them the education, is there relief? There is. Yeah. Because what happens a lot of times is when you explain the process to them, it it helps out because the not knowing, you have no idea what's coming next. Right. But even if the situation is someone's going to pass away, for example, if they know the process and they know the steps and know how to cope with things, it just makes it not easy, but makes it easier for them. Right. Right. So do you help families, if, if you've helped a couple and one of them passes away, do you help the widow or widower move into the next phase then? Yes. And, mm-hmm. and what is that like? I mean, that's... So I get calls all the time, a lot of times from families that are from out of state. And they're trying to, like you were talking about, that sandwich generation where yeah. they're trying to raise their kids. They can't take off work. And then their loved ones are here in this area. And then one of them passes away. The other one's at home. They haven't prepared for that. Their home is not set up for them to age mm. in place, so Got they it. need to go. So what we can do is we can help them find that next place. If, if they're going to move into a senior community, okay. what works best for them? And then if they get in a situation where they can't physically pack, we can go in there, pack, move, unpack, put everything back up, do an estate sale and sell their home. So Got it's just it. an easy for us. It just makes the process on the family. It just takes away that stress. And you handle the estate sale mm-hmm. as well? Yes, so back back when your husband was sick, mm-hmm. uh, unexpected, yes. out of nowhere, mm-hmm. very scary, mm-hmm. were you prepared? I was not prepared. Yeah. Just like they say the doctors are your worst enemies. Yeah. Like they're the worst patients. For me, 
I was, it was a weekend, and I'm thinking, I don't, he doesn't have an advance of directive. I can't talk to the doctors to find out what his updates are. Right. And here it is. I have people that were elder law attorneys. On the weekend, guess who answered my calls? Nobody. Right. So I was in the crisis mode, and fortunately for me, I had a friend of mine that talked to me about someone. They came to my house, took care of all that. But I, I literally had, I had no plan. And here it is, I'm training other people. And so I had firsthand experience of what do I do next and who do I call? And But I had resources, which right. was nice for me to be able to talk to someone. And fortunately for me, I didn't have to go through the process of having hospice. Um, but I knew if that came about, I would be in a situation. And then also the only thing I was prepared about was the year prior, I had got my bathroom redone and widened the door. And at the time, I didn't know. So the shower was redone with the grab bar, the seat, the raised toilet, all the things. So when he did come home, it was easier for him to maneuver in the house. But right. that's another thing for people. They don't plan for that. And right. they come home and they can't get their walker or whatever in mm -hmm. the place. They can't get in the shower. Wow. It's just it's just not, you know, it's just not a good scenario. Yeah, you them. don't want to have to take your spouse down to the car wash. Correct. <laughs> It was tempting. <laughs> hey, I, I broke both my arms at the same time once. Really? And, and I'm not going to dig into it, but my poor wife, you know, when you were just completely immobile and you've got your arms out like this, <laughs> you know, and but uh, being able to, you know, bathe and sleep and eat mm -hmm. and, and yeah. transport yourself and move around the house, you, yeah. we take it all for granted yes. mm -hmm. until like that moment comes. There's nothing you can do. And you guys, you lose your sense of pride because you mm -hmm. like have to have somebody doing the things that you didn't think they'd have to do for you. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. go break both your arms. You'll lose your sense of pride at age 46. <laughs> Gone. Yeah. My psyche looks like the guardrail of an interstate highway. So <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I think I had an ego in my thirties, but that yeah. is just gone. <laughs> so you had this experience. So like, I mean, that's eye opening. Mm -hmm. What else did you learn from it? Well, you learn that you just have to just jump in and, and take care of everything and just just do it. And um, I had to step back and say, at the end, of course, look back and say, this happened for a reason. Mm -hmm. I wasn't expecting it, but what did I learn from that and what can I help other people that are in right. this situation? Yeah, well put. Mm -hmm. So um, do you have a story of anybody that you helped? I love stories. I love to hear you know, hey, this guy did this, 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 and here's the outcome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I don't, I, I don't know if you're bound by HIPAA, but don't say any names. Correct. But I'd love, love to hear a story, or I mean, I'd love to hear ten stories. But mm -hmm. so my latest one, I had gotten a call from a lady who, all they do with their company is help um, families find the right place for their loved ones. Right. And so I had gotten a call from a lady, and her husband had fallen. He had dementia. Was living at home. They live out in the country, and he was in St. John's. So when he was getting ready to be discharged, he couldn't go back home. So mm -hmm. she's scrambling, and so the place that he's going is very small. He had a twin bed. She's like, I don't have a dresser. A twin bed? Yes. Wow. So she's like, I don't have a dresser. I don't have a this, this. So I was able to go on Marketplace, find all these things for her, have it taken over there, get it all set up so whenever he was ready to come home, went over there. And um, got him all set up, and then I went back to visit him and chat and took pictures and sent it back to the wife, who she has had broken, I mean, not broken, but her arm. She couldn't use it. She couldn't pack. She was kind of in a situation where she couldn't do anything. Wow. So she totally depended on Yeah, me she's to, in real trouble at yes. that point. Yes, and so for me to be able to go find these things for her, get everything set up for her, take pictures, send it back to her, um, and she was just very, very overwhelmed with everything. And then once that happened, then she, you know, she raved. She did a really good write-up for me on my review. Got it. Um, so, well, I mean, whatever you are at a minimum, you're an advocate. Mm -hmm. Yes. Not just, you know, I mean, there's a lot that you do, it sounds like. But yes. the bigger part is being an advocate. Because mm -hmm. there probably weren't people in a line waiting to help these people. Correct. In such a short time. So I had to maneuver people that were doing something else to be able to say, hey, listen, this is pressing. We're talking like two days time frame right. when they just said he's going to be dis uh, dismissed. And, yes. Yeah. Wow. And so here it is. She's out of town for us to be able to 
just make it happen for her. Um, it just was very, very, she was very thankful of that. If you're listening to this show, get your stuff together. Like mm-hmm. there is no time like the present to get started on that. The best time to plant a tree, 20 years ago. Next best time, today. That's right. And uh, we all have to kind of pitch in, you know, I, I read a statistic yesterday that 75% of the people in this country over the age of 18 do not have their will set up. That's three out of four. Yep. And uh, I mean, that is that is crazy, you know, given that, you know, life is short, death is certain, your, uh, your birth certificate it doesn't have an expiration date, it's a fill in the blank sort of deal. Mm-hmm. And uh, we we all went, and, but once you plan, do you think men's egos keep them from planning because they're having to face death? Right, exactly. They're like, I'm not ready for that. Don't yeah. yeah, and I get that, but you want to face death prepared or unprepared. Mm-hmm. You know that uh, to me that makes it scarier. Right. You know, I've, I've worked out with some of my buddies. Like, we're going to make a videotape or an audio tape, mm-hmm. and uh, we'll play it at the funeral. I'll say, Katie, the millions of dollars are in the. And the <laughs> <laughs> and then it's just done. And then it's There's just, a beep and it's over. Yeah, that, that'll be it. Now, you don't, want, you don't want to be that guy or that girl. You want to make sure you've prepared for it. Mm-hmm. So um, what are you, um, speaking of education, are you doing some type of educational programs right now? Well, I'm about to start that. So I've been trying, oh, cool. I've been preparing for that for a while. And so starting in March. I'll be doing a educational series. It's going to be called Visit by the Mailbox. Ooh. It Ooh. is a uh, series for 55-plus seniors, and it's going to be non salesy and it's going to be an opportunity for them to find out about these things that they're going to have to go through, right. either them or their loved ones, and it's just educa- purely educational to be able to help so them. So consultative-style relationship mm-hmm. with your clients. You're not mm-hmm. going to try to sell them on the first – you don't have anything that – you know, you got to figure out the situation. Right. So you mentioned education being a component, and there's a couple more. Mm-hmm. After education, what's next? Well, I think just, just empowering them and equipping them to go through what's going to happen next. We, we came up with a deal to, to help you. It's called buyer – Aim ready. <laughs> yeah. And if you have trouble with somebody, I'll come over and talk them to death. Okay. Yeah, I'll put them into a nice, deep coma sleep. That's okay. Give them my speech. So, <laughs> well, we are here with Sharon Willard. Sharon is the founder of Mature Transitions of Tulsa. You can find her on the web at maturetransitionsoftulsa.com. You can find her on the cash flows at tulsabong.com. That's an email where we, we can... We can make a connection, or you can just go on the Tulsa Bong where she will be featured in this podcast. And also on on the YouTube and some other places. MySpace. MySpace, yeah. LimeWire. (laughs) LimeWire. Yeah, and just make sure you log in with AOL because you've only got a limited number of minutes. Do we have our, uh, what is it, remember AOL? Yeah, yeah, yeah. AOL, those are good old days right yeah. there. You had to dial right on in and, and get set there. Yeah, do a yes. floppy disk. Hope no one picks up the phone in the other <laughs> yeah, room. Yeah, Sarah, get off the phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we have come a long way. Yes, we have. All right. Sharon Willard, we're going to ask you for a nugget, a piece of advice. If you were sitting with a room of 20 or 30 younger entrepreneurs and some of the slower, older entrepreneurs like me, yeah. um, what would you say is important to know in business? I think it's important to know that there's no perfect time to be prepared and get ready. Yeah. Start right now, and there's always resources out there. And just find out as much as you can about things uh, before that time comes. And knowing that if you don't make those decisions right now when you can, somebody else is going to make them for you. Right. And you may not be happy with those decisions. You may not like the outcome, yeah. Right. Yeah, be proactive. Yeah. And there was a song that I saw, um, I heard about, and it just says, what are you waiting for? Yeah. Why are you wasting so much time like they're making more? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's it's coming. Mm-hmm. You know, nobody gets out alive. And But the thing you don't want to do is stay alive but be miserable. Mm-hmm. And I, I think you're leading a great charge. We're very proud of what you're doing. <laughs> Thank you. And we wish you the best of luck. We're here with Sharon Willard, and at, you can find her at Mature Transitions of Tulsa. Dot com. Yeah. Thank and so uh, with that, that's a wrap for today's show. Thanks for being part of Cash Flows. And uh, we love we love having guests like Sharon come in and share their wisdom with us. Mr. Kenneth, thank you for all you yeah. do, being the You're king welcome. of podcasts in this new world. And uh, we, we hope that you've received some value. So for today, let's all be nice to each other. You know, let's get along. Let's just consciously be nice to each other. 
and let's make good decisions for our family, for our future, because our future, you know, also happens to determine the future of our children. Let's make that right. And for today, here's something that you can do. Forgive somebody. Find somebody that absolutely does not deserve forgiveness from you and forgive them anyway, because forgiveness is not about them. Forgiveness is about you and cutting those chains, cutting those ropes, those anchors that tie you down continuously. And maybe the answer is there. So thank you for being part of this show. This show is Cash Flows. And always remember this show, it's about you. That's our show for today. Stay tuned for another riveting edition of Cash Flows 